Would you suggest, Jean-Claude Trichet, that it is time for the ECB to move to a formal dual mandate? If they're focused on inflation, should they be focused on jobs in a more broader mandate a la the U.S. Central Bank? I don't think so, frankly speaking. Not only because the fact that they are pursuing price stability in a totally symmetrical way, as we can see, it's obvious that uh, the accommodation of monetary policy is based upon this idea that uh, price stability must be symmetric. On top of that, it's absolutely clear that it permits uh, to uh, create all the elements that the central bank is responsible for to facilitate growth and job creation. Uh, I also add that there is absolutely no chance that a negotiation, a renegotiation of the treaty would change the uh, present uh, mandate of the ECB. And by the way, don't forget, the mandate is you must be sure that you are getting price stability, and again, uh, without inflation but without deflation, but also you, are ba you have to uh, back and support the other policies of the uh, Euro area and of the European Union. Yeah. So there is really something in the treaty which goes in the right direction, in my opinion. Jean-Claude Trichet, how unconventional and creative does the ECB need to become now? We're hearing everything with potentially more rate cuts on the table, a resumption of quantitative easing and including perhaps some assets they haven't included before. Does it need to get more creative? Again, it's been very creative, obviously, if you compare with the United States of America. Uh, of course, the ECB has experienced all the tools that the U.S. Fed has experienced. But on top of that, we have the OMT, which is an insurance policy if a particular country has a difficulty. We have the full allotment at fixed rate, which does not exist uh, in the United States and which permits every uh, commercial bank to have access to all the liquidity they, they would like to, to have. And so you see, and we have negative rates, and negative rates are not practiced uh, in the US. So, so I would say the problem is not that we do not have extraordinary non-conventional and bold instruments. The problem is more to, to see exactly when it is appropriate to utilize them. And as you know, we have had some uh, speeches by uh, not only Mario Draghi, but others that are suggesting that if inflation remains too low and if inflation expectations are not correctly anchored, they could move. But the problem is not, you know, the tools. They have all the tools which are uh, necessary. So in that case, if perhaps the fiscal side should do more of the heavy lifting, you talked a moment ago about some countries utilising their room for manoeuvring. Should Germany loosen the fiscal purse strings? I think when I was speaking of some countries that have room for manoeuvring in the fiscal area, I was uh, thinking in particular, not exclusively, but in particular to the Netherlands and uh, to Germany. And uh, not surprisingly, these countries are also the countries where you have a very high level of uh, cost, com a very competitive level of cost competitiveness and a very high level of current account surplus. So you see, uh, there we have clearly an area which is not negligible, it represents uh, all taken into account with all countries concerned, perhaps 40% of the GDP of the euro area, where you obviously have some room for maneuvering. <clears throat> and if this room for maneuvering is utilized, it would be better uh, in terms of uh, equilibrium, balance in the countries concerned, because again, you have these big current account surpluses. Uh, but it would be also good for all the rest of the euro area and would permit to rebalance cost competitiveness in the euro area. So, yes, indeed, I think that on the macro side, the euro area as a whole has some room for maneuvering in terms of uh, fostering uh, domestic demand in 40%, approximately 40% of the GDP of the euro area.